This week, we commemorate the October 7th attacks in Israel. There is a heated debate around this and seemingly often it depends on one's political viewpoints. We also talk about Israel's military responses and its foreign policy strategies. Welcome Peter Klepper, columnist and editor for Rick's Europe. Thank you, Rebecca. So has Israel responded as excessively as some say? Uh, that's a big question is so uh, a big problem is that we don't really know um, all the facts so then it's uh, difficult to form a, an opinion um, and um, then this also leaves a lot of room for people um, you know coming up with all kinds of claims uh, for example in the United States um, at universities people have been nicknaming uh, Joe Biden uh, genocide Joe uh, they have uh, accused him of supporting Israel to um, commit a genocide. Now, um, if you look at the strength of the Israeli army, uh, if they wanted to commit the genocide in Gaza, it would be super easy, right? Uh, even if you look at the, you know, the the death toll that is communicated by the um, uh, the, the Gaza, um, you know, Ministry of of Health, which is basically, uh, you know, um, a part of uh, Hamas, uh, recognized terror group. Um, even then, uh, you you are at I think they, they estimated at forty thousand, maybe fifty thousand uh, deaths, um, and uh, this is of course um, you know uh, still a, thankfully um, a small part of the actual population of Gaza. So I think in any case we can exclude that there is a genocide happening uh, because. Um, uh, it's simply not, uh, you know, the death toll that would um, uh, validate that. Now, um, is Israel not careful enough? Do they just go in and uh, and and they try to, uh, uh, you know, just go after all these uh, Hamas fighters and um, and and they just ignore that they may be uh, killing uh, innocent uh, civilians with that? That's the second charge. Here. That's a bit more, let's say. Uh, realistic but also there um, if you look at the death toll I think in Gaza I read an analysis which saying that for um, for, for every uh, combatant uh, soldier basically there were two civilian dead in 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 other conflicts uh, this is like one to nine uh, for example when Western European um, governments were bombing Mosul in uh, Iraq when it was held by ISIS, there were no protests in favor of the innocent uh, people in Mosul. You know, everybody thought it was a fantastic idea to, uh, you know, to bomb uh, ISIS uh, very, very hard. And of course, it's very difficult to do that without um, civilian casualties because these terror groups, uh, ISIS and also um, uh, Hamas, they, um, they use um, civilians as, uh, you know, um, um, in, as their human shields. Uh, one, one indication is that um, there's lots of uh, tunnels in Gaza, so despite the supposed Israeli blockade, that's another charge that Israel is blocking Gaza, but still in Gaza there's lots of tunnels uh, for Hamas to use to attack Israel. Uh, now you would think, well, if they can build tunnels, they can also build, uh, you know, shelters. But there's no shelters in in Gaza. So I think, um, yeah, I'm sure like any military, uh, I'm sure Israel makes lots of mistakes. I'm sure the Israeli government is just as dysfunctional as many other governments. Uh, but a lot of the charges are, uh, are I think, simply factually uh, incorrect. How should Israel position itself towards Lebanon, Iran and the Houthis? That's a much more difficult question. I think um, if you're asking, OK, should they respond to some terror attack? Yeah, obviously, that's it. I think only unreasonable people can say no, they should not. Should How should Israel respond to uh, Iran, um, which is using both Lebanon, uh, which is to the north of Israel, uh, and the Houthis, which are, um, you know, a group in Yemen that are opposed to the regime in, in Yemen. There's a, 
uh, a civil war ongoing. Uh, so apart from the support that Iran gives uh, for you know these rebels to fight the um, the, the Yemeni government, uh, they also support them to go um, attack Israel, which is very far away if you look on the map. But they have managed the Houthis by bombing Israel to uh, at least kill one person in Tel Aviv not so long ago. Uh, so this is a big problem. Um, and what what should Israel do? Let's start maybe with the Houthis in Yemen. I mean, Saudi Arabia has been, uh, you know, fighting them for a very long time until the United States told them to stop, basically, or not to double down. Um, and now a lot of, uh, you know, transport is no longer possible through the Red Sea, which is not only a problem for Israel, it's actually a problem for Europe, for our supply routes and somehow we are completely powerless to do anything about it because we've been reducing our military uh, capacity. So um, what you see is that Israel has been responding by sending some largely symbolic, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, retaliation um, attacks on the Houthis uh, after the Houthis, um, you know, managed to kill somebody in Israel. But of course, in practice, it's, it's you know that's not making a big a big difference. So so the truth is that Israel probably cannot do much more uh, than that against the Houthis. Uh, when you're talking about Hezbollah uh, in Lebanon, and this this is this terror group that is supported by Iran is probably the most well armed or was the most well armed terror group in the world. Um, what we could see is that. Um, the Israeli government has managed to dramatically weaken them in recent weeks. But of course, again, this came at a very high death toll. Uh, a lot of innocent people also were uh, were killed in the um, in the process. And here I think it's fair to ask, OK, should Israel not be careful? Yes, um, Hezbollah has been sending rockets to Israel. And as a result of that, you know, the north of Israel is basically inhabitable. They lost about 20 percent of their territory. Thousands of Israelis had to move out of their homes. So you could ask yourself the question, well, if some terror group in a neighboring country does that, at one point, do you not react? So Israel has reacted now. They have dramatically uh, hurt uh, Hezbollah. The question is, will it be enough? Uh, Hezbollah continues to send these uh, rockets. So that's why people are now saying, well, this should go after the root of the evil, which is the Iranian regime. Um, they uh, they may uh, uh, president trump uh, is supporting the idea to hit the iranian nuclear capacity and again it, if israel would do that would do that they would sort of um, like execute the dirty work or do the dirty work of the west because the last thing we want is an iranian regime with a nuclear bomb um, now, on the other hand, of course, uh, it's uh, absolutely fair to say, look, this may well escalate into something that nobody can control anymore. So personally, I think Israel should uh, be very careful not to overstretch themselves. They're fighting on seven fronts already and um, they can only do what they can do. And if in the worst case scenario, they now miss an opportunity to to dramatically weaken the Iranian regime. Well, looking back, that will maybe be unfortunate. But on the other hand, if this whole thing gets out of control, then, uh, you know, uh, then everything is even uh, a lot worse uh, than now. So I think it's better to be really careful. And uh, the US elections, uh, it's getting very close uh, uh, to that. How could that change things, the results of the US elections? I think those elections are very important. Uh, Donald Trump has just said that the US elections are the most important event in the history of Israel. That's perhaps exaggerated, but um, you could see a shift in the Democratic Party away from supporting Israel. And this is, of course, a life threatening event for the state of Israel in case you would have a, um, a Democratic president that no longer supports um, Israel, um, no matter what. So indeed, if uh, Trump uh, is uh, elected, he is likely to allow Israel to uh, more or less continue what they're doing uh, now. 
I don't think that he will allow them to do whatever they want. Uh, you know, uh, remember Trump was actually the peacemaker in the Middle East. He brought together Saudi Arabia and Israel in the Abraham Accords, uh, which are now sort of frozen, if not dead. But he may well manage to revive that, revive that, or he will at least try to revive that for his legacy. So if the Israeli far right thinks that they can do whatever they want with Trump, then I think they are uh, they are mistaken. Uh, however, he will um, you know absolutely support Israel in terms of uh, being able to survive as a nation. And I'm not sure that Kamala Harris will ultimately do that, especially if it would be some open conflict with Iran. Let's assume that Israel goes a little bit too far and that the situation with Iran gets out of hand. Will the United States uh, under democratic presidency go as far as under Republican Trump presidency? I don't think so. Thank you, Peter Kleppe, columnist and editor for Rix Europe. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank you as always for watching Rix Europe.